Okay, now let's talk about what's the real, the real implication of the globalization, right? What globalization matter? Globalization is the ever increasing interaction, interconnectedness, and uh, integration of people, company, and country, right? When China opened the door, right, to welcome the foreign uh, company set up the subsidiary to invest there. Okay, what happened to them? What happened to them? Ever increasing interaction. Why? Right. In the first, uh, I want to say, in the first five years, you know, in 1989, Tiananmen Square, no, Tiananmen Square disaster, right? Something happened. So many, many Western companies don't like to invest in China. But Hong Kong, Taiwan company, yeah, in so near, and a similar culture and language. So they know how to <laughs> build a relation with government, right? With the local partner, right? So okay, no problem. They still went to China, right? So from uh, 1990 uh, to 1994, uh, Within that four year, many Taiwan company and the Hong Kong uh, company and Singapore company they oversee Chinese, right? Oversee Chinese, they went to China and help China to build up their infrastructure, right? They donate for university, they ah build the the railway, uh, the highway uh, for China. Because at that time, China government is, uh, was poor, right? So at that time, when this uh, company went there, and the government eh, gave an incentive to do business with the, with the stay warm, stay warm company, you know? Stay warm company, stay warm company. Uh, this company won by, by the, Central government, you know, there are many many stay warm company. Uh, by, uh, they won by central government. They won by provincial government. Do you know? Yeah, stay warm company. Yes. So, because China is a communist communist country, right? Communist country. Yeah. And. So at that time, uh, many small companies cannot really uh, uh, make a lot of profit. But the big company, they really make profit. Like Uni President, like Master Kong, right? Many of these uh, uh, tra uh, traditional manufacturing company, they make profit in China. So after five years, more and more Western com more Chinese company know that Oh yeah, still some company can make money in China, right? So then they try to enter China that time. So many uh, Western people, they visit China since uh, 1996. Uh, uh, yeah. And you know, McDonald's. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Yeah, yeah start in the, in the China. Uh, so, yeah, more and more Western companies set up their subsidiary in China. And more and more internet manager work there. You know Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft. In 1994, uh, 1996, they not only enter China, but also set up the R&D center there in China, R&D center. Okay. So, yeah. This kind of globalization, the ever-increasing interaction, right? Action. The beer gate, you know beer gate? Yeah. Uh, Vigit China, 1996. Yeah. So, now, uh, 
you know, the China, the China government leader. They build a very good relation with Microsoft. So, sometimes when this uh, uh, their prime minister, right, or their president uh, went to uh, USA, they the first station will stop Seattle, Seattle, and host by Bill Gates. Okay. So, you know, many China uh, political leader, they not only build a relation with the U.S. political leader, also with the, the big company CEO, okay? So, yeah, now in, in China, wow, every year, every year, 100,000 U.S. student, right? U.S. U.S. student study there every year. One hundred thousand students they study in China. <coughs> okay. Not include not include the European student, no. But I think. Uh, even the the five time of Korean student, more and more Korean student, yeah, they uh, study in China University, right? No, many Korean student they uh, study in China since uh, not under undergraduate. The junior, a uh, junior high school, a junior high school student, study to speak Chinese, Chinese, Korean, right? Very neat. Yeah, just cross the border. So now you can find why Samsung can, right? Samsung can be the number one, right? Smartphone company, right? In China, right? The top one market share, right? China. Many, many Korean, right? They uh, can speak Chinese. Walk there, okay? Mm. In the nature business, continue to grow in terms of the enterprise conducting business across border, right? So FDI and the value of the trade between the country, okay? They, FDI, you know? FDI. They set up. Uh, they set up their subsidiary and invest, invest uh, the manufacturing facility. No, yeah, it's FDI. And the value of the trade between the country grow and grow. Okay, so the increased number of firm for ownership is held by a uh, firm from another country. No. Hmm. You know the uh, Volkswagen, uh, not uh, Volkswagen, yeah. The number one car company is Volkswagen in China. In China, Volkswagen, no? Not Benz, not uh, Toyota, no? No, not some, yeah. Uh, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. So, um, because Volkswagen formed a joint venture, 50-50, with the the the, 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 the Shanghai uh, one, one Shanghai car company. Okay. So it's very popular in in China, Volkswagen. <laughs> okay. And you know, four years ago, 2009. The China, uh, one China uh, car company, uh, uh, Geely, you know, Geely, Chile, Chile, Chile acquire, acquire Volvo, you know, V O L V E, Volvo, Volvo, you know this company, Swiss, right, Swiss, right, Volvo, uh, sorry, Sweden, uh, Volvo, yeah, Swiss. Yeah, Sweden, 
That is Vedan Kakamani. The company acquired by China Chidi. Okay. And before, you know why this, this company was, uh, was acquired by, by Chidi? Because it uh, almost uh, bank, bankrupt in 2009, right? Because of the economy crisis, right? But after G acquired Volvo, this company the share right, grow very rapidly in China market. <laughs> in China market. Okay. So Volvo is the China car company now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you know? Uh, you can imagine that, right? Hmm. You know Nissan. <laughs> Nissan, not a Japanese company. Oh, it's the uh, French. You know, acquired by French company. You know, by Renault. Renault. You know, we don't know that. <laughs> okay, so this is the globalization. And you know now the the top one, the top one. Uh, High tech company in Taiwan is the TSNC, you know, TSNC. But the ownership of TS, seventy uh, percent of uh, TSNC won by foreign investor, right? Not the Taiwan, no. Okay. So as a result of this uh, international acquisition and partnership, the international firm product and service is becoming. A, are uh, ever more difficult to identify. Okay, so increase the uh, intensity of competition, place the uh, great pay pressure on the uh, firm to develop the capacity to operate at low cost and with greater speed, quality customer service and innovation, both at home and abroad. Right? Apple, Samsung, right? Wow, they compete, right? With the pressure, right? The great pressure. Right. They need to provide a low low price product with great speed, quality, customer service, and innovation. Right? How can they do that? Right? How can they do that? How can Samsung compete with uh, Apple, right? HR, very important, right? Marketing manager from USA, right? R&D professional from many countries, Japan, right? Japan, USA, and some from Taiwan, okay? So HR is called upon to recruit, select, develop, retain the workforce talent, then can achieve this, uh, a lot can uh, achieve this uh, global competitiveness, right? Right? So how can Samsung uh, uh, compete, even outperform many uh, smartphone companies, right? Because their IHM price is very successful. Right? They not only send their candidate, candidate, right? This uh, uh, global talent candidate, right? To head what? Uh, one more year, right? Uh, a study in foreign country to study there, right? And then they also attract many international professional in terms of R and D, marketing, right? Uh, work for them. Okay. So internet business is no longer only the domain of large com uh, firm from the large or developed country. You see that Samsung case, right? Korea is not a, uh, is not a developed country, right? It's just a new industrialized country. Okay, so now let's talk about some strategic decision right, to go international, okay? How do the various uh, HR practitioners play the uh, such law in M&E, multinational, multinational enterprise, okay? So, 
What should IHR people do? What should they do? Hmm? IHR people. First, there are some senior HR executive, right? Most of them uh, work in headquarters. Okay? They are uh, an active participant in the development of the global strategy and guide the firm in terms of global talent management issue. So HR head, executive, right? Take the responsibility. Right? To help the company to form their internet strategy. They are the partner. Right? If, if this company decides to enter Indian market, okay, how can we acquire the Indian talent? Right? What for us? The HR head, right? yeah. he needs to uh, collect a lot of information right? of the, the India. So, okay. And then, Second, the senior HR executive develop the HR strategy with the global HR team. The global HR strategy plan support the corporate strategy objective. Yeah. So when you want to set up this uh, international strategy, yeah, how to achieve this uh, strategic objective right, in the worldwide operation how can they achieve yeah so very important HR executive right they need to work right with the, the global HR team global HR team who is the global HR team not only the function manager of HR, HR department in Hong country also include the HR manager right HR manager in foreign subsidiary, right? Okay. Many HR head was uh, uh, located in uh, regional center, right? In regional center. And then each business unit, regional and country HR unit, develop an HR work plan to achieve the HR strategy objective and develop metric to evaluate timely results. Okay? Yeah, so the China HR right, manager, okay, should help, right, to uh, make the plan. Okay. The HR plan. Got it? Okay. Now there are four types of uh, IHR management practice. Four type. I leave this for you to learn. <laughs> ethnocentric. Ethnocentric. What do you mean? Ethnocentric. They focus on regional market. Focusing on regional market. Yeah, yeah. And for one culture. Yeah, one culture. And most of their manager, international manager. Same country. Yeah, from the, yeah, most, the yeah, from the home country, right? The home country. And the polycentric. Polycentric. You know, polycentric? Anybody know? Anybody know? Do you know polycentric? Poly? Yeah. <coughs> So, <coughs> how they uh, compose their international manager? From home country or? Yeah. Yeah, the local, right? No, more local manager. Okay? Polycentric. You know, Japanese company. Is the polycentric or ethnocentric? Huh? Poly? That's in more. Yeah. Ethno. They kind of keep the stuff within their borders a lot. Yeah. Japanese cannot decentralize the authority, right? To the uh, uh, 
foreign subsidiary. Right. It seemed like they were expanding more to China until the riots yeah. last year, two years ago. Yeah. 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 So most of the Japanese company they use external centric strategy. They can uh, uh, employ they can employ many local manager, but they can this manager local manager cannot become CEO in foreign subsidiary. Right? Yeah. So do you like to work in Japanese company? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The higher many China company higher, but this China company can become successful in the global market because of this uh, polycentric policy, HR policy. They can uh, leverage it, uh, the U.S. manager. Right. Regio centric. What mean? Regio centric. Do you know? Regional centric. It means this uh, multi companies are many regional centers, right? Asia region center. <coughs> Europe region center, right? The managers from one company work abroad. Yeah. From, but from their hometown, from their home country, they go abroad and work there. But they don't recruit managers from another country. So, this which in this region, mm -hmm. yes, manager, right, work only within this main mm -hmm. region, right? They will be transferred mm -hmm. abroad, but only limited in this region, region mm -hmm. subsidiary. Okay, so uh, HR practice, HR standard, HR policy was uh, established only for this region, right? To right to get the coordination benefit, right? Geocentric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, even the China major can become the CEO. Of the headquarters, got it. Even the U.S. manager can become the the CEO in Japan Samsung, right? Got it. This is a geocentric, geocentric. Okay. Nah, so I don't need to uh, explain the detail. Uh, you just dip for your reference. Okay. So. Now, if your company want to become a geocentric company, okay, you need to develop a global mindset inside the HR function. Right? You cannot be a China HR mindset, right? China mindset. Your HR cannot be. You need to have a global mindset, okay? And you to need to align the core HR process activity Right, which is the new de requirement of company globally, okay. While simultaneously are responding to local issue and requirement, hmm. You mean that? You mean that if you want to respond to the local issue requirement, you need to recruit manager from the host country, right? However, if you want to uh, uh, align the core HR process, right, uh, with the new requirement of uh, competing global, all these local managers need to be transferred, right, to be developed, right, developed in other country. They need to have international experience, right? right? Okay. Then enhancing global competence and capability within the HR function. Yeah. Even the HR professional, HR people also need to be located, right? Uh, from the headquarters to the foreign subsidiary, or from foreign subsidiary to the headquarters. Okay? Yeah. Uh, now let's uh, check this map. 
know how the HIM uh, operate. Uh, within this country A, for example in Taiwan, okay? Country A. The S form, right? Acer, okay. In Acer company, there are many expatriate, right? What's assigned to work in China, right? In uh, Philippines, in Malaysia, okay? In Russia, okay? Pay PCM, parent, no? PCM, parent countries, right? Uh, nation, right? Parent country nation. So PCM, there are some uh, manager assigned, right? Assigned to work in China, in Russia, okay. And even some uh, European manager, okay? Or some, uh, no? They are impatriate, impatriate. It means that the local manager can be transferred to work in the headquarter. So in, in Asia headquarter, in, uh, sorry, in Asia headquarter, you can find many, some Italian, some German, okay? Some uh, US Caucasian, work there, okay? Even HTC, yeah, HTC, yeah, same situation. And then, in Taiwan, you can find Another company uh, like uh, uh, Samsung, okay, or uh, Dupont, many modern companies in Taiwan, they set up subsidiary here, right? So, but uh, for example, Dupont, do you know Dupont? Chemical, the top one chemical company in, US, uh, in the world, is the US company, Dupont. D U P O N T, Dupont. You know? Dupont. Okay? So this company set up subsidiary in Taiwan, and after 20 years, many Taiwanese uh, managers become the global manager. Right? And they was assigned and work in headquarters to handle the, the, the world business. You know? Especially the electronic business. Yeah, like it. And also, you can find ASUS. ASUS? In ASUS headquarters, you can find many uh, uh, foreign R&D professionals. There are almost uh, 3,000 R&D professionals work in the headquarters of ASUS in Taipei. Right. And some of them come from uh, India, right? Come from uh, other countries. And do you know TSNC, right? Or same situation. There are many famous uh, scientists work for C TSNC from uh, USA. Right. Got it? So there's some TCNs, uh, immigrants. Okay? Got it? So, so how is the global expansion of the firm serving its employee and customer? Yeah. So now many Western company want to do business in China, okay? Expansion. How, yeah, this is serving your employee. And customer, how? Okay, think about it. Yeah. So, how to develop the IHM practice? First, establishing an international HR strategy, and you should know the difference between international and domestic IHM. Domestic, right? Domestic. And development of the IHM function. Okay, so you should first establish the IHR strategy. Country selection is very important. Right? If you want to set up a, a 
foreign subsidiary for marketing or for R&D, right, or for manufacturing. Yeah, where? Where? How can you recruit and hire the people, right, the employee, right? And it will need a competitive budget. Right. You can set up an uh, uh, IT R&D center in India, right? India, okay. Mm, only maybe now only thirty uh, percent the wage of USA, right? But their competence, right? Maybe eighty percent of the US. Uh, like engineer, okay. Global staffing, yeah. So how to recruit? How many employees will need to be located to the foreign location? Yeah, or will necessary people will be found locally? Right. I illustrate for you when GME manufacturing, uh, GME uh, TFT LCD manufacturer, right? Right, TFT LCD, right? When they set up this, the new manufacturing subsidiary in China, they assign 150 engineers to go there and recruit almost uh, uh, three times the local engineer, right? And give them training. Right. And then they can manage it. Ten thousand employee, ten thousand work. Got it. So, yeah, stage by stage. Global staffing, recruitment and selection. Yeah, what will be required to find and recruit the next uh, talent to make the new international operation successful. Right. When you want to select an international manager, you need to check his competence, right? His uh, cross culture awareness, awareness, okay? His uh, cross cultural uh, sensitivity, you know? Yeah. So, how to select? How to select? When you assign an international International manager work for you in uh, foreign subsidiary. This is a very serious uh, uh, matter, right? It matters a lot. Okay. If he income, he if he is incompetent, right? He not capable. Then all the foreign uh, subsidiary will fail. Okay. Compensation, yeah. How to mod motivate, right? Compensate this uh, international manager, right? They should get higher compensation, right? Higher compensation, <laughs> and standardized or uh, adaptation. Okay, so it uh, the same HR HR part used in the foreign subsidiary work or not? Hmm? The same HR right policy, same HR function. Sometimes need adaptation, right? Sometimes standardization. Okay. Right? For example, when you want to recruit a manager in the local context, this manager, managerial level should be Standardization, right? Yeah. However, for the operation level, right? Yeah. And uh, even the compensation policy, right? Compensation policy should be more adapted to the local context, right? The different uh, standard of the living level, right? Okay, so 
how to differentiate the international versus the domestic HIM. For the IHIM, more HR function activity, right? You want to assign the international manager, wow, HR people need to do a lot of the thing for him, okay? A broader perspective and expertise. You are not only the expertise of the domestic HR, also need to be, right? The expert, right? The expert of the IHR, right? You should know the, the different countries' uh, 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 employment law, right? Or the, their cultural uh, differences. Uh, and more involvement in people's lives. Right? Uh, uh, when, when they go there, how to accommodate. When you come here, right? Oh, do you have any orientation? Did you? Not yet? Not yet? You have? One day? <laughs> okay. It's easy to live in this campus, right? You would know how to get along with the monkey, and uh, you know. <laughs> okay. And dealing with uh, managing a much wider mix of employees, yeah? Just I said, in one country, uh, PCN, SCN, TCN, the third, you know, the third country uh, national, okay? If you visit Shanghai, Shanghai, or oh, you can find in one com in one company, there are many different cultural background employees work together in Shanghai. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't want to uh, go further, but I will stop here and give you a twenty minute break. Everybody go outside, take a break, and then come back. Uh, Ten. 50, okay? And had a 20 minute discussion, okay? Yeah, for the, this question, remember the question? I give to you. No other question?